You know, if we look at the mega trends of a growing world population, fewer arable acres, labor challenges, water challenges, how is precision agriculture going to help to address some of those challenges? I would tell you that precision agriculture is the solution to those challenges. It unlocks the opportunity to do more with less. I told you there's a company disrupting agriculture with precision technology, you might ask, what's a new startup called? But it's a company that's a household name and nearly 200 years old. Yet for the last 25 years, it's been reinventing how farming is done and promises much more to come. So let's go meet John Deere. Pleasure to have you here today at the farm. Thank you very much. Let's go. Super excited to be here. Can you tell us where we are? I think about it as sort of the central nervous system of uh, technology and agriculture. It's our test farm near Bondurant, Iowa. Uh, and it's the place where all the new technology shows up first. Uh, we get to test software and hardware here, the whole production system at times, so all the way from planting through crop care through harvest. You know, I don't think it's hyperbole to say agriculture is life. What are some of the primary challenges farmers are facing today and what role uh, does technology play in addressing those challenges? Yeah, great question. You know, I think at a high level, I would tell you that farmers are challenged to do more with less. Uh, more meaning more food production, um, and we need to do that because of a growing world population, right? There's 8 billion people on the planet today. We're headed to 10 billion people by 2050. Uh, but we want to do that in a way that, that is uh, more environmentally sustainable, more financially sustainable for the grower. And so that means doing things with less, right? Doing it with uh, less seed population, less crop inputs, less labor on the farm, all of those things have to happen in order to make this magic we call agriculture function. We mentioned uh, autonomy. Uh, I hope we get to see it a yeah. later today. Um, but can you talk about the technology itself a bit more? Yeah, so autonomy, the place that we've started is, is in tillage, the job of tillage in agriculture. And we started there because sometimes fall tillage is one of those things that is the most stressed event to happen, and sometimes it doesn't happen. When it doesn't happen, it has a negative impact on the, the next year's uh, productivity, next year's crop. And so there's this pressure point in the operation around finding enough labor to do that job. It also conveniently happens to be one of the, the easiest jobs for us to fully automate from a technical perspective. And so we've removed the human from the loop by installing stereo vision cameras on the machine, three in the front, three in the rear, and high-end compute capability to process the images that those stereo cameras are seeing. So that's the first time that we've ever allowed a human to exit the cab of the machine and let the machine perform uh, all on its own. If you want to go see an autonomous tractor, now is the I'd time. I'd love to. Let's do it. First of all, Jamie, I'm glad it's you driving, that's not me. Yeah, so this is the autonomous 8R tractor with the tillage tool behind it. Uh, you saw us release this in CES uh, two years ago now. Um, and so we've been uh, experimenting with customers with this, uh, working with customers both fall tillage and spring tillage. And you know, I, already, I already talked about why tillage is important, why that's a nice application to start with autonomy. You know, I, I think about it as crawl, walk, run, different levels of sophistication and, and complication in autonomy and agriculture. The sensing modality we picked for this machine uh, and this application is stereo vision. So the front of this tractor has uh, three stereo cameras, so six individual monocular lenses, right? but they're stereo, so they're at a very prescriptive distance apart from one another. Just like your eyes, right? You have two eyes and that gives you the ability to sense distance. Um, your eyes are triangulating when you fix on a point and your brain is doing the computation of how far away from me is that thing. Same thing with stereo cameras, right? So that's what we're using them for, both object recognition, what is that object, and how far away is it from this location. Um, that all takes a lot of compute. And so we, we do the compute on the edge. So within this device is, uh, or within this box is a, a device we call the vision processing unit. And it employs a graphical processing unit from NVIDIA to run the numbers on these stereo cameras so that we are getting an update in a timely fashion for both objects and distance, all right? And so these front three cameras are sensing uh, the, 
yeah, I would call it maybe the, the front half of the tractor. And then we have six cameras on the rear of the tractor. Those are perceiving the area around the tractor from basically center ax rear axle center line back behind the tillage tool, okay? And so we're monitoring that environment all the time for objects that are coming into it. And we're assessing the distance to those objects. And then when the object meets a certain classification criteria, we stop the tractor, right? Or in certain cases, if we know, for example, that there's a, a tile inlet, something in the field that we want the tractor to maneuver around, we'll dynamically plan a path around that object in the field and keep moving forward. Can you talk about the role of digital sure. in precision agriculture? Yeah, I'd love to. So our, our digital platform, we, we, we believe it's the premier digital platform in, agri in agriculture is called the John Deere Operations Center. Uh, it's an open platform, meaning that not only does Deere data go into that platform, uh, but actually any data that's of interest on the farm can be put into Operations Center. We have over 200 connected software companies in the Operations Center today. It's uh, the most mature, I would say, digital offering in agriculture today, and we're going to continue to invest in making that the place that growers can go to to not only see their data, see the information, but have it provide and surface insights to them on their farm that help them to make better decisions for a more efficient farm in the future. Mm -hmm. So the digital side of this in John Deere Operations Center is the, the integration the, of autonomy to the farmer, right, to the grower. And what the farmer will do is he'll start an autonomy sequence that, from his mobile phone uh, or her mobile phone that, that uh, looks at the environment around the tractor and assesses, is there anything in this environment that would prohibit me from starting the job? Mm -hmm. And if there isn't, then the farmer swipes for autonomy and it starts on the planned route and the planned work uh, for whatever that particular field required. The farmer can actually see what the machine's doing through their, their mobile device. So they can pull up the autonomous tractor in operation center and they can see the output of any of these cameras. Um, and there's something almost video game-ish about mm -hmm. that, right? It's, it's the ability to see what your, your machine is doing in your field in real time. When an object is detected that's human, we make somebody go out and restart the machine sequence because we want to make sure that there's a the human has cleared the environment right mm -hmm. if it senses a human uh, if it's something else for example uh, we had we had an incident uh, in this spring so there was this object in the field that the machine stopped for mm -hmm. right it was a kite on the ground so the farmer can choose in that case right yeah. this isn't a human so what do you want me to do do you want me to route around this kite do you want me to stop and you come out and pick it up and clear it? What, what's the action that I should take? Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about electrification, biofuels, and how it applies in farming? And also if there are any, if there's any you know, transferability between farming and construction? Yeah, for sure. So we're, we're working in all areas of alternative propulsion. Uh, that includes electrification, biofuels, making our existing uh, products more fuel efficient, et cetera. Um, electrification for us, um, when, when you're talking about the applications associated with the drivetrain, so propelling the vehicle, uh, it tends to make the most sense today in lithium ion chemistry form uh, for about 100 kilowatt uh, power level and down, right? So that excludes some of our larger ag equipment, it excludes some of the larger uh, construction equipment, but not completely, and I'll come back to that. Um, so you will see uh, electrification happening in both the small ag space and the construction space, and you've seen this in uh, you know, some of the, uh, the products that we've already shown. I think of uh, the Consumer Electronics Show and the excavator that we showed uh, demonstrating a lithium ion uh, chemistry battery electric excavator, right? It's important to note the importance of uh, biofuels to that, that area. So these machines that we're going to see today and tractors, combines, and sprayers are all equipped with engines today that can burn 100% renewable diesel, as an example. It's less about a, a, a technology opportunity and more about uh, creation of the market and availability of the, the actual renewable diesel product to be able to, to be consumed. This is a pretty typical planter for the Midwestern part of the United States. This is a 24 row planter being pulled by an 8R tractor. So you asked about electrification before. Each row unit on this planter, this is an exact emerge planter, has two electric machines on it. Within the seed hopper, get it open, uh, the seeds come through this tube from one of those tanks. They're blown in there with a fan that's pushing the seeds in. The seed hopper will fill and it will put seeds in this bowl. This bowl is spinning with an electric machine, uh, an electric motor, very precisely. As the bowl spins around, there's a, a, 
a device that pushes the seed out into a brush belt that comes out right inside of this disc blade, okay? And so that, that brush belt is placing seeds at roughly 300-ish, um, 100 to 300 seeds per second, very precisely into the trench that these disc openers are making. Mm -hmm. All right, and so that's making sure that each seed is spaced exactly however far apart the farmer wants them to be spaced. So when we talk about electrification for us, it's not just about electrification to make the wheels go around, it's also about highly precise manipulation of all the, the inputs, the agricultural inputs, in this case seed, uh, that you couldn't do. We used to do this with mechanical means. It used to be chains and pulleys and gears and sprockets. Today, electric machines do that and software enables us to do that at a very high, high rate of speed. Planting used to be four miles an hour. This machine will do that in 12 miles an hour with better outcomes. And then this, this planter on the front is the fertilizer tank. So these two in the back are the seed tanks. The front one is liquid fertilizer tank. That liquid fertilizer is coming out on this planter uh, right here, okay? And so it's coming out being dosed on the seed, all right, and, but in one long strip, all right? That's called starter fertilizer. And it gives the seed a little extra kick to get it to emerge in the springtime of the year. Uh, exact shot, which we showed in CES this year, uh, instead of putting that as a continuous strip on all parts of the field, just doses yeah. each seed, right? Yeah. And so that, that reduces well, how, the amount of fertilizer that gets How used. much is the, uh, what's the reduction in it, the amount of fertilizer? It, it from, depends yeah. a lot on application, population density. It wouldn't be uncommon to see 30%, north of 30% uh, in some of the corn products. From exact shot. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Since Deer pioneered Precision Ag 25 years ago, um, you guys have, uh, you know, put out many new technologies. Most recently, CN Spray Ultimate, Exact Shot, uh, Full Autonomy. Can you talk about the value these technologies have unlocked so far for farmers and for you guys? Yeah, sure. Well, CN Spray, as you know, is the ability to, as you're driving a self-propelled sprayer through the field, uh, to sense where the weeds are in this case and spray herbicide only on the weeds, right? So back to this idea of doing more with less for a grower. Uh, this really impacts the amount of inputs in the form of herbicide that they have to put on the crop, right? Uh, up to 60, 70 percent reduction in overall herbicide application rate. That's the benefit of technology, right? Nothing, we couldn't do that with just a human in the loop uh, historically. We've had to have high power compute, we've had to have vision systems on, in this case, 120 foot boom in order to make that work. Uh, so that's a clear and demonstrable uh, input reduction to a grower that drops straight to their bottom line it's better for the environment and it's it's good for deer it's a good business for us to be in because it's creating value for the grower uh, so this machine uh, obviously new to the world and probably one of the most complex uh, from a, a technical perspective that we've ever built each one of these is a camera so we're processing these images up to 12 miles an hour um, and we're determining whether in that image is that a weed or is it healthy is it useful crop and if there's a weed, we turn on any of these nozzles that can actually uh, reach that weed with product, with spray product. We basically have 200 milliseconds from the moment that we see a weed in the image to be able to dispense the product and hit the weed. So in that 200 millisecond time budget, you've got to be able to do all the processing of the image, make a decision, and dispense the product out of these nozzles and hit the target. Wow. Um, so high-end compute, and we'll, we'll eventually d deploy, you know, as, as it becomes available, higher-end compute to be able to do this faster uh, and, and continue to, to change the game. So the last step in the agricultural production process is harvesting, right? This is, um, this is the moment when you start to get your scorecard, right? How well did you do? All these decisions that you made. Uh, so what we started to do is introduce technology to harvesting. Uh, we put uh, grain quality cameras on. Uh, we don't have the shields opened up, but they're a camera that would go in the clean grain auger that shows you the quality of the grain at high speed. So we take a, a high speed camera and we take a snapshot of what's going through that, that elevator at any point in time. And it allows a grower to see in real time how much grain is in the, the, the clean grain side of this versus how much we call it MOG, material other than grain. And that will allow them to change the settings on the combine in order to maximize the, the cleanliness of the grain and minimize the waste that's going out of the back of the combine. This machine is a highly efficient machine. It's more efficient than its predecessor. It's more efficient than anything else out there on the market. It'll do 45% more in terms of productivity 
at 25% less fuel. So if you think about that in, in the context of a, a large grower or any grower really that's running a machine like this, that's money that drops to the bottom line because I get done with harvest faster. I can maybe go do my tillage application that we talked about first, uh, but I also um, have less fuel that I burned, which is a sustainability benefit to them. And I've done things uh, in, uh, in a way that allows me to manage the farm better. Jamie, you touched on so many different things. If you can just tie it all together for us. If we take that very long-term view, how is precision agriculture going to help to address some of those challenges? Agriculture is, a, no, no pun intended, is really fertile ground for much of these technologies, right? It's a, it's a great first use case for autonomy because of the environment that we happen to operate in. Uh, it's also a great use case for higher levels of precision and how we think about applying uh, inputs to crops and, and uh, stepping into this era of uh, computational or digital agronomy where we will we will know um, what the optimal care package is on a plant level basis for this corn plant or the soybean plant or this wheat plant and be able to administer just what it needs in order for it to live its best life and maximize productivity right that's where this is headed in the future uh, and it's got to it's got to go there to meet this growing need for world population in terms of food we talked a little bit about this renewable fuel source. Uh, we can also grow these crops to provide the feedstocks in order to produce that fuel, so the demands are, are certainly out there. But we have to recognize that we're doing that in an environment where rural labor is getting scarcer, right? The, this movement of rural to urban in terms of population movements, not just happening in North America, it's happening globally. And so there will be less labor on the farm to get the work done. And that speaks to, I think, a couple things. I think it speaks to this, this uh, need for autonomy and highly productive machines in the future. I'm sure Our the pleasure. next time, if you'll have me here, um, I'll be able to drive this. Yeah, the next time, not today. <laughs> There's gonna be a paper test eventually, so. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jamie. Appreciate yeah. it. Our pleasure.